Women should be able to control their bodies. Women should have uh, a choice as to whether or not they were going to become a mother, when they were going to become a mother. In the beginning of the, the late 50s and the early 60s, it was the invention of the birth control pill. And most p people saw this at that time as a, quote, natural. The idea that you could have a pill, that it might be inexpensive, etc., promoted the public policy, the mobilization for the, the, the laws to change. In the United States, um, 40 years ago, there was probably more access because well baby clinics, uh, Medicaid programs, the WIC program, food stamp program, all of these things were put in place in order to um, take care of women and their children. There are millions, literally millions of women who get primary health care from Planned Parenthood. I mean, uh, two or three million women, at least in the United States, who get their mammograms, for example. Do, do, they, do they counsel women who need abortions? Absolutely, but that's only something like two and a half or three percent of what they do, which means 97 percent of what they do. Reproductive clinics are not just, quote, abortion clinics. They're places where people go for pap smears to be treated for STDs, etc., etc. In countries that have universal health coverage, you don't run into the bad statistics you do in the United States. The lack of universal health coverage in the United States is very detrimental to women's health, women's issues in terms of dying in childbirth, infant mortality, STDs, etc., etc. In Afghanistan, the current maternal mortality rate is listed at 460 deaths per every 100,000 live births, which ranks as number 21 in the world. The infant mortality rate is currently the highest in the world, with approximately 121.63 deaths per every 1,000 live births. It is common for births to take place in a woman's village, only with the help of a midwife, which contributes greatly to the number of injuries, infections, and deaths associated, associated with births in the region. During the Taliban regime, it was illegal for male doctors to treat women until after 2000. Additionally, women were not allowed to enter educational institutions that would allow them to receive the training needed to become doctors. Consequently, medical care was not an option for women under that government. Now women can receive treatment, but there are very few people in the region with the medical training necessary to care for women suffering from complications due to childbirth. Saudi Arabia, in contrast, has much lower infant and maternal mortality rates. The current infant mortality rate stands at 15.61 deaths per every 1,000 live births, and the maternal mortality rate is 24 deaths per every 100,000 live births. Children are seen as a source of wealth, so women are encouraged to have as many children as possible, with little spacing in between births. The stark difference in conditions may be largely due to the fact that contraceptives and family planning are available in the region through a number of clinics and services. However, some Muslim scholars believe that women should not use contraceptives without their husband's consent, and a cultural stigma exists against women using any form of contraception. Also, sexual education is not available in schools, in school curricula, in the region, nor is education compulsory in Saudi Arabia, which also negatively affects the issue. Islam is a key component in this issue as well. Afghanistan is an Islamic republic, Saudi Arabia is a monarchy, and the official religion of the country is Islam. The significance of the religion in these societies has a great impact on the issue in particular, and the writings in the Quran are cited in decisions made regarding sexual health. However, because of common misconceptions regarding sexual health and reproductive practices, it is difficult to move past the barriers currently in existence. The unmet need for family planning in Africa is huge. It is estimated that almost 30 million married women of reproductive age would like to either stop childbearing or space the birth of their next child, but cannot do so because they have no access to family planning services. Issues contributing to the availability and accessibility of family planning services in Africa include but are not limited to a lack of strong government commitment, medical barriers, and sociocultural barriers. 
Medical barriers include age and parity requirements for certain methods, requirements of husband's consent, refusal to serve unmarried women, and unnecessary and time-consuming medical and laboratory examinations. In Zanzibar, for example, health professionals refuse to provide contraceptives to unmarried women. In Botswana, Burkina Faso, and Senegal, on the other hand, it is easier for unmarried women to get contraceptive methods than for married women because of requirements for husband's consent. As indicated earlier, human reproduction is viewed in most of rural Africa as a natural process that should not be interfered with artificially. The lack of culturally appropriate information and education reinforces this belief. In spite of these problems, however, significant progress has been achieved in many African countries in reaching the rural population with family planning information and services through a variety of outreach programs. What further can be done in order to face this enormous challenge? First, we need a strong commitment by governments in the region. Government support to family planning programs can be in the form of increasing access to services to rural areas, encouraging the private and NGO sectors to get involved with the provi in the provision of family planning services, providing financial and tax incentives for those who are involved in such programs, and launching and or supporting information and education programs that reach all sectors of the population. It is also important to empower women. In countries where women have access to modern education and employment, they tend to marry at a later age and have fewer children. There is a mutual synergy between educating girls and expanding reproductive health services. When mothers use family planning, their daughters are less likely to stay home from school to help care for younger siblings and help with housework. If teenage girls have ac access to good family life education and reproductive health services, they are less likely to get pregnant and drop out of school. When women are educated, they can more easily insist that their partner use condoms. Um, we've got a lot of we've got a lot of work to go. It's not just only passing a law, having some public policy law pass. It's how we implement, how we educate, how we empower uh, the institutions to be able to appropriately take care of these women who uh, are victims. Mm -hmm.